Um, so my presentation is about the future of WET. Uh, CodeFest 2013 was awesome. It was great, and it was really, really cool to be part of it. And now it's 2014, the next year. So as uh, people know, the uh, WET has been evolving over the years, Corinna said to it, and it's been uh, probably one of the most exciting, challenging projects I've ever been part of. But like everything else, movement forward is even more exciting. So before I get into the details, a little bit about me. Um, I've been contributing to WET for about four years, fantastic four years. Um, been, I do a lot of extensive work with open source frameworks. Um, I, my handle, Master B, you probably see me, if you do a search on Google, apparently I'm getting quite, <laughs> I'm, I'm all over the place in, in many different open source projects, which is kind of an ambition of mine. Um, I'm definitely an active member. I do a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, admin work for the jQuery group, for also some modernizer group, okay, modernizer and uh, and other uh, and other well, yep, nope, and other kind of open source projects, and definitely have a lot of fun with that. Learn a lot as well. The reason why, more importantly, because for me, I've always been a true believer that the internet is what you give back to it. I mean, I started beginning my 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 background is actually economics, ironically enough, um, and. What ended up happening was I got involved in web at a very young age um, in my career, and I actually saw a lot of potential in it. And the one thing that I was amazed about with web was that the resources were there to be found and people were willing to help. And since, for me, I've kind of continued that. I never, I, I've followed the open source community. I was always baffled with how much I could, you know, I didn't know much about something and I would ask a question and there'd be 30 people that would answer me and I'd be like, wow, this is an amazing concept. So this is how I've kind of followed that, where I make it an honest, goodness try to give back as much as I take from the internet. So, where's wet today? 3,200 commits under the hood. Wow, that's a lot of changes. 50 plus plugins and features. Um, actually, since I've been around for a few years during WET, I mean, that number always seems to amaze me because I remember back in the days predecessor to WET when we started with a template, I think we started with a total of three. It was, uh, it was it's quite impressive when you look at 50 plus plugins today. A strong focus on accessibility and performance. This has always been, accessibility I think everybody can agree has always been paramount to WET. Um, but the performance has been the later push over from three to four, which has been an amazing, amazing kind of challenge, I guess, from a developer's standpoint. Backed by solid UX principles and rigor. Love the UX guys. I can't stress enough. I can honestly say I'm a developer. Boy, please don't ask me to do any UX design. Oof. <laughs> so the fact that they've come and joined on board has made this such a unique experience. I'm learning every day. Thank you, UX people in the room. <laughs> and a larger community than before. I can't, um, I, I, I'm always amazed when me and Paul are up at wee hours of the morning, you know, answering questions or doing code commits or code review. Yes, you guys probably know that I am up at freakish hours in the morning. I, I love it that much. Um, I'm always amazed to see how many people and members we have and how many active contributions we actually do have in here. So it just keeps growing. It's a fantastic, fantastic experience. So what do we learn? Web is always evolving. Um, I think that to me was probably the first biggest, uh, I guess, realization when I started getting onto web. It's nothing is ever static. You first day you, you, you solve a problem, you think, oh, this is it, I've got it, the ultimate solution. Tomorrow someone writes it better. It's an amazing environment to be in because actually it does have this kind of progressive feel where you're always constantly learning. But at the same time, it does pose challenges for a lot of enterprises and stuff because you can imagine change is great. Recoding and rebuilding and adapting all the time can be a very costly experience. Never just one thing, never just one way of doing things on the web. That actually is a model for uh, Perl programmers, which was one of my core competencies. Um, and the web really speaks to that. Nowadays, we're getting more and more uh, solutions, more and more frameworks, more and more ways to do the same thing. Which one, it becomes more of a race to find out which is a better fit and which is the smartest choice. Accessibility is both a challenge and a reward. 
I was waiting for the oomph um in the crowd. Really? Reward? Um, I definitely know back in the YK1 days, in the earlier days, accessibility was always kind of one of those things where you're like, oh, but I want my website to look so cool. I want this running man to swoosh across it. What? What do you mean we can't do this? Accessibility historically has come across as one of those things that have been like, oh, we, 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 we can't make things pretty. We can't make things fun. We've got to turn around and actually make it kind of static and monotone. This is what WET actually has shown me over the past years. That's not true. This is the reward. I actually found it really interesting in learning in my career that accessibility now actually, yes, it's there. There are some parts you can't get into and some cool new features. But it actually shows you a different way people manage that information. It actually shows you a different way to view it. We, we have a tendency as developers to actually be very focused on, oh, here's what the page looks like. And designers have a tendency to say, I want this to look just like this. It's that other side, the people that don't see it that way. Interesting enough, mobile devices, things like this. So accessibility actually can be a reward. And this is what WET is really, or at least I, I'm trying to produce, and I know the WET community has been really working with that, hence WET4 and all this great goodness. User-centric design is not just about looking good. I learned that. That was new for me. I really didn't know that. <laughs> um, once again, I, I, I kind of put them on the, spot, on the spot, and I really do speak a lot about the UX people. That is exactly right. It was, for me, it was really interesting because user-centered design was a real exciting piece to it that was kind of, they kept showing me that, yeah, that's fine. You can have a widget. You can have all these cool features, and yeah, we can make it look fancy and snazzy and go swoosh. But believe it or not, actually, if you actually do it this way or you actually make it in a way that's usable and practical, people will actually interact with it more often. So it was a really, user-centered design was a really interesting kind of learning curve for me. Crowdsourcing helps to drive innovation. Look around, look at this room. This is, this is, this is innovation in itself. Crowdsourcing has been a fantastic experience. It definitely taught me how to write better. Yeah, there's a few people that are gonna laugh. Yeah, I caught him at midnight. Yeah, you should see this guy, right? Um, so yeah, so definitely uh, crowdsourcing was really, really exciting. And it does help drive innovation simply because in the past four years with WET, I can't speak enough to some of the contributions that have actually come in from open source parties, from private sector, even from within government, which is kind of exciting. So, WET4, what does it give us? Mobile first approach. Reusable templates and plugins, better performance, and some really cool uses of upcoming and emerging technologies. I think I go ahead and spoke to that, and you'll probably see that through the breakout sessions. So, looking into the future, but so what's ahead? You know, Mario Wet 4 is fantastic. It does so much already. So, wh what's next? Sorry, I had to plug in Back to the Future. Big Back to the Future buff. Anyway, web animations. Open plugin architecture, new synchronization layer, and streamlining the core. So, web animations. Um, basically, what happens in, in WET right now, as it stands, we, we generally are moving away and trying to leverage some newer technologies to actually do animations that swoosh and that fun and that kind of exciting dynamic feel to a page without relying on some older JavaScript type technologies which have a harder time for mobile devices. This is where we've already started to explore some of these benefits. You see them in the carousel plugin, you see them um, even in the web feed widgets to some degree. We're starting to move into using CSS and other technologies to try to better leverage that. Obviously, the, everyone can agree, the upside to that is obviously more performance, um, and smoother uh, kind of animations that are running across mobile devices. And one thing that actually is coming out of the, just the, the, the kind of work that we're doing already, it's generally less complex in terms of code. Um, some of the, the technologies that we are using to drive a lot of these cool animations that are there, the play button, the woo, the, the spinning wheels and all this stuff, actually do get very complex. Um, so now that we're actually trying to use CSS and other kind of technologies that are a lot thinner, we're finding that people are actually jumping on board a little better and actually saying, hey, I can really work with this. This makes sense. Repurpose and reuse. Open plugin architecture. 
The one thing that you probably may see, the latest example would be in the web feed widget. There's an example there where we're actually bringing in Facebook and Twitter and you know, YouTube and we're putting it behind a nice tabbed interface. This is the open plugin architecture that's gonna be the focus for WET moving forward. We're gonna actually try to start really leveraging blending existence components in. The existing components that we have are really kind of already very modular per se. But now we're actually starting to drive them and actually show examples, work on with other developers on how to blend those in to actually solve more problems. Obviously this is gonna enable developers to be more innovative makes it easier for developers to customize and build upon WET. I think that's pretty, I mean, it, it, did, it does become pretty self-explanatory in the sense that we can actually bring in different pieces together to solve a problem. And the interesting part is by making more application-friendly method for leveraging WET. One of the common things that we're seeing with applications is that a lot of them like to aggregate certain sources. They like to bring in three, four, or five different pieces or functionality or features. This kind of open plugin architecture we're gonna be exploring is going to look at that and actually try to leverage it better for applications moving forward. My personal favorite, new synchronization layer. Um, the addition of an established open source library called Backbone. So basically we, we are, we're bringing, one of the things that WET is kind of in a gap that we have, we don't really have, is that talking back to servers and, and kind of that discussion between applications and actual platforms back and forth. So WET is basically a framework and it's, it's its own little presentation layer, but that connector that actually connects it much more, I guess, standardized or more efficiently is kind of missing. This is the new synchronization layer. We're gonna be working on actually turning around and giving it a full robust synchronization layer so actual applications, even static web pages, even even different sources, different platforms themselves can actually work and start communicating with the presentation layer almost attached. Streamlining the core. I don't think I can speak enough of this. We did it for WET4, WET3, all these other exercises. The big thing that we wanna do is kind of keep looking at how ways to condense and compress the actual um, already existing 80% optimization, which I think is amazing. Um, there's always room for improvement, so we're definitely going to be streamlining the core. We're going to be looking at different um, approaches on how to rewrite the core uh, moving forward. This will actually allow us to better extend certain functionality. We definitely, um, by obviously increasing the performance, well, by decreasing the download size and increased performance, we're gonna get that. And we're gonna be looking also at different flexibility models. Um, the actual, currently as it stands, WET is very modular, it's very extensible, but there has been comments that have popped up throughout with the open source community about different ways of, hey, wouldn't it be great if I can, if I can really just kind of bring in this really cool feature or this really cool functionality piece in an application or a website that I'd like to leverage in without really having to go off and build a whole plugin or a wrapper around it. So this is the kind, the streamlining the core, we're gonna be looking at all those angles and all those features to make it almost a little bit more plug and play allow people to actually just have this presentation layer. They can just connect all their platforms to it and actually have this wonderful little wet experience. So, how to get involved? Step one, we're all here. That's a good start. Um, we're definitely holding code sprints. Some people may know about, some people will not, but they're actually weekly um, kind of breakout sessions that we have devoted for the day. Um, we have departments, and thank you for the departments, d and and others as well, Service Canada and stuff that host them. And basically, it just bring a laptop, and you know, we offer, generally offer Wi-Fi, and just come on in there and sit with us and kind of work on certain common problems or actually learn a little bit more about what GitHub. I think that speaks for itself. WET is based in GitHub, so we definitely need a GitHub account and actually get familiar with GitHub. And CodeFest, where we are today. Um, breakout sessions that we do have are gonna be really focused towards the developer, some of them. There's others that are more UX and policy and stuff. So I definitely encourage to get involved to join in some of these. We have some great ones uh, off the top of my head, CSS Transitions. Uh, the one that I'll be looking at, which is more evolving WET, uh, we're looking at that open plugin architecture and streamlining the core pieces. Um, and also possibly talking a little bit more about some really cool buzzwords like web components and so forth in the future. So definitely there. Anyway, so once again, WET has been a fantastic experience. We have an amazing roadmap ahead. It's gonna be a lot of work, 
but still, I think that uh, I think that we can actually make this uh, probably. I'm very excited anyway about uh, the next evolution of wet, more so about the the synchronization layers and the compatibilities that we're going to probably see in the upcoming two or three releases. All right. <laughs>